person, Kathy Hughes, who is the chairperson of Urban One, has come up from uh, where? Where? Where were you? I don't know where you were. Where were you? At your house. <laughs> but she is the founder, she's the current chairperson, but she established our company, how many years ago? It'll be 40 years, October 3rd, 2020. Ooh, 40 years, 40 years. Ooh. When we've been in business, I created it 43 years ago. It took me three years to raise $2 million to get it on the air. All right, tell us that story quickly. Uh, quickly? Well, it's <laughs> it's a long story. Um, I had a, a business plan, I had a proposal, and I went to 32 different banks and they all said no. They said I was too black, I was too female, I was too young, I was too no, 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 no. And my 33rd presentation was to a Puerto Rican loan officer at Chemical Bank of New York. That's right, Mama Nancy, a Puerto Rican, one of your peeps. And she was in her first week of her job as a loan officer, and she told me that she would have preferred me being Puerto Rican, but black was close enough, and she gave me a million dollars. She loaned it, she didn't give it to me, she loaned it to me. But that's how I got in business, a woman. 32, 32 no's. How, how do you sustain through that much rejection? When your daddy's a CPA, as mine was, he teaches you about the law of averages, which means it is not possible for no to remain indefinitely. At some point, it has to be a yes. Remember that when you're being turned down for things. The law of averages will have to swing back around and someone will have to defy it and say yes. So even if you get 132 no's, that next one might be a yes. So don't give up. Forty years. Our birthday is coming up. We have to plan. Yeah, it will be forty years. And I have a plan. The plan is to endow forty community organizations with forty thousand dollars each. That's the way to celebrate. Well, you've always been. I mean, my recollection. First of all. Um, Ms. Hughes and I met in 1973 at 96.3 WHUR. I was, uh, I had just turned 19. I was and me too. Um, <laughs> 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 I was I was 17? No. no. <laughs> WHUR was hired by a dear friend of ours, John Paul Simpkins, well, he's friend now. He was my boss then, he was from the general Philadelphia. manager yeah. from Philadelphia. Shout out to John Paul Simpkins and Bob Nighthawk Terry. Some of you may remember the film, Talk to You. Talk to you? Talk, Talk to, to me. me. Talk to me, right. Talk to me. And uh, Bob Nighthawk Terry was the gentleman with the dogs, the, the broadcaster. Well, he heard that Cedric entertainer. the Entertainer portrayed. Thank you, that's right, Cedric the Entertainer portrayed. And uh, Dewey Hughes, who is Miss Hughes' ex-husband, but still a valued family, friend, member of our family. On your side. <laughs> 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 oh, quite a journey to see the development of our company. Yes. And uh, I'm honored to be back in a full-time capacity. But one of the things that we have done collectively over the years is always super serve the community. Absolutely. That has always been Absolutely. important to you. I mean, you're a businesswoman, you're an entrepreneur, so the bottom line, always important. But in that bottom line of, of economic well-being has always been human well-being and our community. You have to do well before you can do good All for right. anybody else. Yeah. That's the reality. Reverend uh, Ike, the only thing he ever said, I never bought the prayer cloth, I never listened to it, okay? But the one thing he said that stuck with me forever 
was that the only thing that you should do when somebody in need comes to you is not be in need yourself. Because you can't help someone else if you don't have the resources to first help yourself. So you have to first do well in order to do good. And in the black community, we've been programmed to believe that people change if they make money that they no longer are part of us. And that has really held back our progress because the reality is a rising tide lifts all boats. So the more of us who are successfully, are successful fighting in many cases. But these are my colleagues and we are the voices of Philadelphia. Absolutely. I'd like to introduce to you DJ Touch Joe. because we can provide jobs and opportunities. So, you know, it's been our motto. It's been our mantra. And, uh, you know, Radio One, we got to do well so that we can do good for our community. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Can we just tune in? It's afternoon delight. Well, when we get to the evening portion of it, on Cosmos yeah. 107.9, I'm Deanna Williams. This is our inaugural broadcast. First day. Just heard, I know, our first, first day. day. You look beautiful. Thank yes, you. Does. Your fam is here. To have your mom is here. My your whole staff here. Yes, I know. My You're colleagues. Yep. I, I love my Radio 1 family. And, and with that said, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the spirit of our ancestors and one person in particular who meant a great deal to you and to me who was part of the Radio 1 family. Uh, I want to acknowledge E. Stephen Collins. Oh, Dan was with me. We were at Reading Terminal, and I pitched him to leave the established career that he had already at a competitor and come with us and help us build something in Philadelphia. And right there, he agreed with one condition and that was that I buy him some turkey bacon. So his signing bonus was a pound of turkey bacon. <laughs> All right, from the Amish. We have a 
picture of it. Yes, we that was his signing bonus because he said that he knew that my commitment to the community was something that he could be very comfortable being a part of. And I don't think there's ever a week even that goes by that I do not think about him. And when I say my prayers, I thank God oh. for him and wish He's that our time good. together could have been so much longer. He made such an impact. He loved you all so much in the Philadelphia community. He was willing to do any and everything to uplift this community, and he did. Yes. He was successful. Well, his spirit is with us. He is part of us still. Howard, there is another brother in our community in the spirit of East Needham Collins, who is a dedicated, devoted servant, and he is part of our Radio One family. We welcome to the microphone, Solomon Jones. Solomon. All right, Solomon's in the house. Solomon, you are on the front line of community activism. Yes. And uh, you've been a member, now how, how long have you been with Radio One now? I've uh, been with Radio One a little over a year now. It's been a year, mm -hmm. almost a year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think the thing that, that strikes me about having a microphone and about having access to our people um, is that if we are not going to use it for our people, then somebody else needs the microphone. Exactly. Somebody else needs the Deanna it. just said you that know? earlier. And, and that's, it's, it, it's so true because... Um, I have been through so much and have uh, overcome so much. Our community has overcome so much. We are going through so much uh, that we all have to be a voice for our community uh, because of, of what we are up against, uh, but also because of what our ancestors have been through. If I never get a reparation, right, everything that I do, every dollar that I make, every connection that I make uh, in our community is for the ones who didn't get anything. It's for them. We stand on their shoulders, and so, um, e. Stephen Collins, who I knew and respected and loved, um, you know, I, I hope to, to do a tenth of what he has done uh, and, and what he did in, in his career, what he was able to do with Radio 1. And so I'm excited about you, Deanna, and about what you are doing um, in our community by uplifting our people, and I just want to be a part of it. So congratulations. And I want congratulations. on the same page on this issue of reparations. Yes. Everybody else has gotten reparations, uh, reparations but us. Yeah. We are entitled to it, we have earned it, and the only reason we haven't gotten it is because we have not spoken with one voice on this issue. Amen. Amen. We all get on the same page, we will get our money yes. and change our Exactly. When Michelle Obama made the statement on Forever First Lady when she said that she was proud to live in a house that was built by black folks. Thank you. We tend to forget that. We should not forget that. When I walk around Old City, Philadelphia, and many other places, I look around and I'm like, Independence Hall. I was in Independence Hall with my mother, Fourth of July. Uh, a structure to survive by primarily this whole country. This whole country. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Solomon, I want to thank you for the service that you rendered to our community. You know what time it is? Thrilled that you are part of our family after Neil Bond. You know what time it is? By this woman here, a very conscious, caring, giving black woman who's one of the blackest people. I know. Hey! Reparations now! What a 